Hey, yay, we're live. Hi, Jamie. Hey, Susan. Looks like I need to make one little adjustment. All right. Hey, Louise. Hopefully we have sound and everything is working fine. I am going to play the intro and we'll get started. Thank you, Jamie, for that sound check. Take a look. We, hi Paula, you made it, yay. Awesome, awesome. Uh, we are going to be working on some techniques, as I had said a couple of weeks ago, we were getting more into the techniques rather than um, tons of different files, I, although I am still doing the files and you will still see those popping up and coming in. Um, we're working on some techniques for our, our cards. Uh, let me go to the overhead. There we are. Um, and I just kind of threw this file together for you guys. Let me see if I can zoom out a little bit. There we go. Um, and don't pay attention to this because I figured out what happened here on my top piece and I will correct it when I do mine with you guys. Um, but we are doing ink resistance. That's what we're going to be working on and how we can get the ink to resist color and do the blending. So that is what we're going to be working on today. And then we're also going to do some, what I call the antique, uh, gold leafing. Um, uh, and you can get this in silver and copper. I have a link down below for this. It's called Gilding Flakes. Um, and we'll get more into that in just a little bit. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Kathy Ann. And um, we're just going to work and we're going to play on some stuff. I'm not going to focus as much on putting it together. As a matter of fact, I have a base in the file for you guys that is over on the site. But I didn't cut the base for us to play with tonight. So all I'm going to do is bring some of my stuff in here. And as I was saying on this, now I use some Elizabeth Craft paper, okay? And it's a soft finish paper. Um, you can get this online uh, at elizabethcraft.com. You can probably get it at scrapbook.com. But it's just a, a soft finish, smooth cardstock. Um, and that's what I used for my panel and for this piece here. And the rest is all Cricut cardstock. But my embossing pen with my writing on Cricut, if you can see the difference in this embossing and this one, it's just kind of fell flat. And I thought, well, maybe I overheated it uh, when I did it. So I did another one, and the same thing happened. And I'm like, something's not right because I'm not overheating it. The other worked just fine. And the only difference was this one I used my embossed pen and the other I used my Versamark stamp, okay? And it gave me more of a raised image. And I figured it out. It's actually a combination of the pen and the paper. This paper soaks up the pen a lot more than the uh, some other papers like this smooth... Um, Stampin' Up cardstock. You can use that as well. Now, I did stamp this with the Versamark, and I had no problem. So I'm not sure if my pearl powder just isn't liking the pen, or it didn't like the combo of the pen and the paper. So I'm just going to say, if you're going to be using the pearl to do resist with, 
um, I would go with the Versamark uh, stamp pad rather than the embossing pen. We know it works fine with the clear and it works fine with the Stampin' Up! paper with the clear. I do know that and I tested the Versamark ink on the paper and it worked fine as well. So some of your papers are going to soak up more ink so you may want to play with them and do a cut yourself a scrap and dip it in your inks or write on it and do a test before you actually do your project to make sure that your combination is going to work. Okay, so that's always a good habit to get into. It's something that I know and I should have done it and I didn't do it. And then after I made it, I was like, huh, that's what I get for not testing. Paper does make a difference when you're using inks, when you're using stamp pads, when you're using blending tools even. Um, and it does make a difference when you're using your heat embossing and embossing pens versus a stamp pad. So make sure that you check your combination of materials that you're using before you get started. Okay. For this card... I'm just going to set some of that out of the way. I am using, again, this is the Elizabeth Crest Soft Finish for my um, panel. That's what I wanted to use. And I used the, and I don't know if this is still available, guys. You might be able to find it on eBay. But you can use any background stamp any background stamp. And what I mean by a background stamp is it's going to be like a whole panel. Okay. And um, this is called Sheet Music from Stampin' Up. I, I, I've had it for a while, so I'm pretty sure it probably isn't available anymore. But you can find all sorts at um, on scrapbook.com from Hero Arts, from um, I think even Lawn Fawn, all of your specialties, all to new. Um, anywhere that you buy stamps, usually you're going to find a big background stamp. And that's what you need for doing panels and this kind of technique. And I've got a couple. I already heat embossed some stuff because you guys have seen me do this before. But there may be some new ones out there who have not. So I'm using my Misty for this. I've already used my emboss bag and gone over it, and that's to keep the static down. You want to make sure that you do that. Now, I'm not using my magnets on this because I've cut my panel to the size of my background stamp. Um, if you're using your Cricut, you may want to enlarge this panel and have it cut a half inch bigger so you have some playroom, and then you can trim it up on your trimmer. You can do that, or you can do like I'm doing. I'm just making sure it's up in that right-hand corner and that it's where I want it to be. And then I'm just going to take my Versamark pad, and I'm going to ink up. Make sure it's inked well. I just re-inked my ink or two. So if you guys, if you're... Versamark is running out. Just get yourself the Versamark reinker so that you can make it juicy again. Yeah, and then I'm just going to stamp that, give it a good press. Now I've got. I a lot of people use the Tim Holtz. I know the the glass craft mat. I have just this old. This came out of an old refrigerator, and I've used it for years. Um, for various things. You can use it for um, cutting boards and all sorts of stuff. And I'm just making sure that I've got a good amount of ink on my paper. I'm, I hope I've got that in the right spot. I'm going to do it one more time. I hope I didn't move it. But I'm going to I'm going to stamp. I like to stamp twice just to be sure. Usually I don't move it. Hopefully I don't get a double image, but we're focusing on technique more than perfection right now. So I'm just going to move that out of the way. And then I am going to be using my clear embossing powder. Okay. Hi, Miss Gerald. So what I like to do, and you can use a clothespin, you can use whatever, but I have my favorite tweezers. As you can see, the end of it is burnt, and I'm just going to hold 
this over my coffee filter. And you can do this over copy paper, whatever you want. I, I use coffee filters. It's just what I'm used to. And I'm just going to tap that off. Make sure that you coat it. And I know that you're, oops, you don't want to do that. That's when copy paper is better. I'm just coating it really good. Get it real good and covered. And that looks pretty good to me. Just going to clean up my mess. And that's why I, I always have a brush when I'm embossing because I always make a mess. Just going to get that out of the way and get it back into that coffee filter. And just put it back into the jar. And now we're just going to heat it. And I don't have my quiet one out today. I've got my loud one, I apologize. We're just going to heat that until it melts. Sorry about the sound on that one, guys. I know it was a little loud. And you just want to kind of get... I know it's going to be difficult to see, but I'm going to hold it at an angle. Hopefully you can see that reflecting. Um, and that's where we're going to get our resistance because that part is going to stay white when we ink because we put the clear ink over the white paper. Okay? But again, a lot of people use the Tim Holtz mat, uh, and I am using just my basic one that came out of a refrigerator. Now I use different ones. My, I ordered some blending brushes, the makeup type, um, because they do work better from what I have seen than these do, but that's with dye inks, okay? I am using dye inks. These are not pigment inks. Pigment inks are going to blend a little bit smoother than these do, okay? Um, but with a little bit of practice, you can get you can get there. You can do this. It's very easy. So if you have the dye ink pads, you can still do this. You don't need the distress oxides. Um, you don't need um, the pigments. You can still work and do some blending with your dye inks. Um, and here in the next few videos, we're going to be working with different types of inks so that you guys can see the difference, okay? I am using today the Close to My Heart uh, Raspberry, Pixie, and Ballerina. And again, these are all the dye because the Pixie does come in pigment and dye. But I'm just tapping this on there, and then I'm tapping it onto my glass mat, okay? And I'm going to start at the bottom of my cardstock, and I'm just going to work around and come up onto the cardstock, okay? And you can get as much or as little ink as you want. You can make this as dark, as bright, as light as you want. You're, you're in control of how much ink you use on this, okay? And we're just going to keep 
working that up onto that's probably if you see all that little fuzz that's probably from my earlier project I didn't get it all off the mat here but I'm gonna work this color about a third of the way up on my card now if you want to stop and you want to add more colors you can add more colors you can add fewer colors and just work the same color getting lighter but I'm just going to work it in. Now I, this is personal preference, I like faded spots like this corner might be darker than this corner. That's just me. Do yours the way you like. But you can just work with it and play with it. Okay? And I'm just tapping some of the ink off over here on the side so that I can work it up on. And I'm just getting lighter as I go up. Okay? And I'm going to stop right about there. And I've got some ink already on the pad. And I'm going to change because this one I'm using is the pigment. Okay? Instead of the dye. This is the dye base. And this is a pigment. And it's going to run a little bit smoother. It's going to be a little easier to work with, and you can see how it looks more milky than the other. And I'm tapping that into, and you can see it here, I'm tapping a little bit into this other ink. And I like to mix mine. And then I'm coming up on the cardstock and blending it into that lighter area of this, and then bringing this up lighter. So that I'm blending it into that bottom color. And if I need more ink when I come back, if I want to make this darker, I can come back and make this darker. And I'm going about two-thirds of the way up on this. I'm just going in a circular motion and like I have darker here and lighter here and that's the that's the look that I like work with it and play with it and get it the way that you like it and I'm just removing this pad because I don't want to mix my pigment into my pad so that's why I'm rotating over here I'm just going to come back in here with a little bit darker on the bottom And that's looking pretty good to me. It's starting to fade, but I don't have a line. You don't want a line. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I, I like that. It's just very subtle, but it, it's there's not like a line there. When you're doing this, you want to make sure that you, you get that subtle change. Okay, so when you're working with smaller, and we're going to do that as well, um, I've already got my tag over here. So while I've got my ink out, and I'm going opposite, I'm going from the top on this down. So I'm going to come over, and I don't have as large of an area. So I'm instead of coming like a third of the way down, I'm probably going to stop right about a quarter and give myself some room to get that lighter without getting a line if that makes any sense I'm just going to tap a little off here and then we're going to go oops I tore my pad it won't hurt anything I'm going to go back over to the pixie and just tap a little bit in and then right up on it so I'm dragging it right through that other color. Now if you're working with distinct colors like a yellow and a red, of course you're going to have the orange if you come up on top of it. So you're going to have to start and blend them and 
in that line instead of coming from the end. I hope that makes sense because you don't want to mix very different colors because you will get a totally different color. And then we're going to go over to the ballerina. And again, I'm just going to tap some over here on this. And come right in and down to the end. It's hard for me to do it that direction. Okay, so now we still have that gradual, but we have no line. Okay, and then we're just going to bring this piece back in because we're working with two pieces. And I'm starting right about where this one ended and working in to that one. This one is very hard to see because it's extremely light. So it's going to be hard to see on the glass. And now you can see that I've got like a little bit of a cloudy line here. So you can continue to work with that and just smooth that line out. I've got all of this covered, so I'm just going to smooth that out. So that my line sort of vanished. Okay. How cool is that? It's super easy, super simple to do. It does take a little bit of time. I like to heat mine just slightly afterwards so that my inks don't smear. With dye inks, you don't have to worry about it, but because I put the pigment in there, I do want to set it a little bit. And I have couple of little samples. This one, and you can see where you can get some lines if you're looking for that detail by going with very different colors. With this one I use Sugar Plum, um, Pixie, and Candy Apple. Okay, so it gave me that purpley to pink to coral look by combining those. Now these were all pigments. They were easy to combine. This is the exact same colors, a little heavier, but not much heavier at all. The difference was the paper. This is like a 65 pound Michaels um, paper that we use to do rolled flowers and then this is the soft. So you can see how the difference in colors come in depending on your paper. Okay? Totally, totally different. And you can see here the same thing. These are the same colors, but it's on a, a different paper. It's not, to me, as vibrant as this one. Okay? And then, of course, I did some fall colors, and this is what I mean by you can get some distinct lines, but without the lines, because you're going to blend this color to this one and this color to this one. And so you'll get that difference in color without a line. So it just takes a little practice. Play on your scraps. I know you got scraps. Don't throw them away. I double stamped this. This was a boo-boo stamp. So I played and used my colors on it because I knew if I messed up it didn't matter because I wasn't going to be using this anyway. As you can see I had a, a double stamped image there and it kind of blurred it up. 
but it would still make pretty a pretty background. I'm not going to throw it away because I could put a piece of burgundy paper on this and make a nice fall card. The paper that I am I used for this panel was the Elizabeth Crafts Soft Finish, but you can also use the Stampin' Up. This is Stampin' Up. Um, and you can use the Close to My Heart as well. It has to be smooth, guys. You can't use the Cricut on this. It's not smooth. And I think I saved a piece just so I could show you guys. And I don't, I don't know where it went. I lost it. It was in this stack. But, oh, there it is. Let me just kind of show you what happens if you're using the Cricut. I mean, you can, but you're not going to get, it's not going to be as smooth. And you, I hope it'll focus on that. All that texture pops out. And it doesn't make your color transition smooth. Okay. So that's what happens when you use texture. You can if you want that kind of a look. Okay. If you want that, I don't know what, what kind of look you might call that. Um, kind of pixelated to me. Because all of that pops out. where It looks like the ink sits on top instead of going into the paper. But yeah, play around with your colors. You can. There's all sorts of things that you can do with this. And as long as you're using white paper and you can use the clear or the pearl, you can use white um, embossing powders and stuff. You could use the golds and things like that. But it's not like a resistance if you're doing that because you can put them and stamp them on top of it after you uh, ink it. But if you want that white to pop back through, you can do it this way, and it's just easier to me than doing the white. I, I just like the, the look of it. So, by using the white on the white and then doing it. And then, of course, you're just going to layer up your card. And I've done put all my stuff away. That's the boo-boo one. There it is. But then you're just going to put your panels together. I lost my birthday. There we go. And I just glued this one directly onto the oval panel. And you can see I've got ink here, and that's where the ink is coming from my panel. So before you get your base out here, you'll want to clean that off with a baby wipe. Make sure it's dry before you bring in your other card stocks so you don't mess them up. Just gonna layer that up. And then we're gonna move on to our gold foiling. Don't need that anymore. And that's just a nouveau glue. You can use art glitter glue, whatever glue you have, your adhesive to glue those two pieces together. And then I use the close to my heart, the 3D foam dots. And I am not going to use my music note on this one. I am going to be using a butterfly on this one, but I haven't cut it yet. So I have to get my punch out. I'm going to use a die or a punch, I think. So I just put four foam dots on the back of that so that it was just slightly raised up. But these are called gold uh, gilding flakes. And we had touched on it, I think, a couple of weeks ago when we... We're doing some other techniques and we were talking about it. You can use the sticky powders with this. Nuvo makes a glue type pen that you can run over your uh, stamp pads and then you can stamp. Um, the happy birthday is not a stamp, Susan. It is a design space image. Okay. So, and it's in the file. But um, these are called gilding flakes. They come in several different colors. This is a sample jar. This is a tiny jar. Um, the link down below 
is a 6.8 ounce jar. It's a big jar. It's about this big around and about this high. It's a, it's a big jar. So um, the link that I provided gives you the copper, the silver, and the gold, and I think it's like 23 bucks on Prime. You can also look on scrapbook.com, or you can look for the smaller containers of them. Uh, I don't know if you will find the smaller ones. Um, I got this in um, one of my t uh, monthly subscriber kits. They have a kit that you get and I got that in there. So I don't know if you'll find this size when you're looking, but um, the, the big one is the actual size container. And it's a really good deal, 23 bucks, and you get all three colors in a big container. So, But you're going to need the glue pen to, if you're going to use your stamps, to gold leaf those. Because the glue ha it goes on milky, and then it turns clear, and that's when you're going to put your gold leaf on there. I don't have that pen. I do. I can't find it. So I was like, okay, I need to come up with another solution on how I can do this um, because I can't find my glue pen. But you can just use that glue pen on the back of any of your stamps, stamp your image, let the milkiness go away, and then put your gold flakes on. But I didn't have that. It has to be one of the ones that stay sticky after it dries. Your regular glue will not work. Uh, so I'm using my Tombow. Okay? And all I'm going to do, and I know that I've got three, uh, and three and three. I'm going right in between, and I'm just going to run. It helps if you got it the right way. I'm just going to run right down the center and just do a couple of lines of my Tombow. Okay? That's all I'm doing. You can use double-sided tape. Yes, the embossing pens, the embossets, they fit your Cricut. You just pop them right in. No need to take anything out, anything. Now when you're doing these flakes, you do not want a fan on. You don't want to breathe on it. You don't want to sneeze on it. You don't want your air conditioning vent blowing because this stuff will blow everywhere. Okay? Uh, I get one monthly kit and and I get it from Nuvo because I don't want a bunch of stuff I know I'm not going to use. Now you can pull this out like this and I mean you'll have big flakes, little flakes, all sorts of stuff. But you're just going to kind of stick that down. And don't throw any of it away. You can put it back in the jar just like you do your embossing. But I just put it on here and just start rubbing. Um, oh, I didn't get any glue there. That's okay. You guys don't know what to happen if that happens to you. My Tombow stopped right there for some reason. But I only, that's the only thing that I subscribe to monthly in is Nuvo. Um, their craft kit because I get stamps, I get a die set, I get product. I get everything in there for $39 a month. It is the most awesome kit. It, it really is. So I didn't get any right there, so I'm just going to come back in here over it. And then I'm just going to stick that. Just going to continue layering it up till it's stuck. And it doesn't matter if it doesn't coat the whole thing. It's like antiquing it. That flake got in there. Um, I'm not looking for a perfect line, perfect coverage. I want it to look, I don't, messy. I don't want it to be perfect. I want it to be messy. If you want perfect, use, um, instead of using your Tombow, something like that, use double-sided tape. Use the glue pen. But I, I like this look where it's all lumpy and bumpy and and a, they go they last a good long time depending on how big your areas are and how much you use it. I've used this about six or seven times and it's like I have to push it back down into the jar 
you're not going to be able to save every teeny tiny little bit that comes out of there, but you get the drift. Get most of it. Get it back in that jar. And you can see where I have sticky stuff on my mat because it's stuck. Lots of fun to play with those. Lots of fun. I love them. Uh-oh, we're buffering. I've got a green light. Hopefully it's not still going. Yeah, it must be YouTube. Then it, I'm showing perfectly green over here. But we're just going to peel this up. And then we're just going to plop it right down. Clean up my gold flakes here. How super simple and easy was that? Yours came back, Linda? Great, great, great. Very super easy. And then you can put this onto any card base, cut your bases, whatever you want them to say, happy birthday, things like that, and um, just put them on that base. You can make a bunch of these up put them to the side, and then you can stamp your bases or make your joy card bases and then just pop these right on the top. Oh no, be safe, Anne, with the storms. So does anybody have any questions about anything that we've done tonight or any design space questions, anything like that? This is a really quick and simple technique, so it doesn't take a long time. And you get a, a really great looking card. Is Fonto worth downloading for Design Space? Um, Anita, if you, all you have is Android, I, I think probably so. Um, I don't use Android, so it's going to be hard for me to answer that one for you. Um, with stencil making. I do not ha have, well I may have one Vicky where, but I use vinyl to make my stencils. I don't use a ton of reusable stencils. However, I do um, you can buy this stencil now at uh, Hobby Lobby, at Michael's, things like that. And you can cut and make reusable stencils out of that. A lot of people also use um, Mylar. Uh, I have been known to use transparency and cut my own stencil from just a piece of transparency. Um, so and they work for me. It's going to depend on your stencil and your use as to what you might want to do that with. And I do have some things lined up to do stencils with you guys. Um, I just didn't have time to get it going today. But if you're going to make stencils and you're going to do a lot of reusing, personally I would invest in stencil material. 
but I cut transparencies. I just cut it on transparency. It's this basically the same thing that this is, except this is colored green. So if you have, if you buy the overhead transparency sheets, I mean, you can get those reasonably inexpensively in an 8.5 by 11. Usually you don't need a stencil any bigger than that if you're doing cards. Um, you might need it if you're doing signs. You might need it larger. Um, but when I'm, I, if I need something specialty for a card, I'm just going to cut my transparency for, um, for what I need. If you don't have if you don't have a heat gun, you can you can use a hair dryer, Anita. But heat from underneath. If you're doing heat embossing, you want to heat from the back till it be till it gets good and warm and starts to melt, and then go to the top because hair dryers blow with a force and they can blow that off. Be careful about sitting something on top of your toaster like that because some toasters may catch on fire because it traps the heat where it can't come out of the toaster. Yes, you can use an old mat cover too and, and make these. You can use your old mat covers for these as well. But I believe Michael's, I think that's where I got a, a many of these. And I didn't buy them for the stencils, I'll be honest. I didn't buy it for the stencils. I wanted the stamp set. So I bought the stamp set, and then these just have been sitting in the drawer. You can see I haven't even used them. Um, I don't, like I said, I usually use a masking um I don't know exactly where I moved it to. It's called a rock, paper, scissors. Uh, has a, um, a label. It's called rock, paper, scissors. It's removable labels. And if I'm going to do a masking for that, that's what I'm going to use. And I do have that plan for one of our techniques using the rock, paper, scissors labels as a stencil. <laughs> so you guys are about a week ahead of me. <laughs> So uh, those are coming. We're, we're going to talk about stencils and everything. Like I said, I'm getting more into, rather than doing a bunch of videos and signs and all of this stuff, I'm basically going to be teaching you the techniques and so that you can use them on paper, you know. But you can use these techniques on cups, on wood, on other things. You're just going to change your medium. So instead of using... Um, dye inks on a cup you might use a vinyl stencil and paint um, so there are, are tons of different things but I am going to be focusing mainly on doing some techniques with papers and stuff so that you can learn the techniques because if you can use these techniques and you can use them on paper and do things like this you can take these techniques and use them in other craft projects because paper, people don't realize paper is one of the hardest mediums to learn. Okay? It's one of the most difficult things that can be difficult to work with because there are so many different types of paper. They have different fibers. They have different textures. You have different inks. You have all these different things that come into play with paper, but it's also your most versatile medium. Re the the Duralar, that's what I was thinking of, Pat, thank you. Um, I said Mylar, I think, but I meant, you knew what I meant. <laughs> okay, Paula, if you're having that issue and, you're, and your, your edges are not like you want, that's what I was saying. Cut your panel an inch bigger all the way around. That's going to give you a half inch all the way around or quarter inch all the way around. Cut it two inches bigger. Whatever you feel like you need. And that way when you stamp it, then you can have some overhang. And then you can work on that. And if you're messing up your edges, 
then you can trim it. And so it's going to look all nice and neat and pretty. Nobody's ever going to know that your edge didn't look good. And it's and, and I was that way for a long time. I'm like, you know, it's me. I'm, I'm being too picky about it because there's really nothing wrong with the, the edge. Um, and it, it just takes a little bit of practice. But yes, yeah, start with bigger pieces instead of the exact size you need. It's really a good idea to start with a bigger piece and then cut it once you're finished. Paula, and also when you're inking those edges, make sure that if you're using a pigment ink that you run a little hair dryer or uh, your heat gun over that because pigment inks have a smoothing agent in them, okay? And so they don't dry as quickly as your dye inks. And so that may be handling them will mess them up if they're not dry. Yeah, the... The stencil films and stuff is called, you're right, it's called Show Off, uh, Pat. They have them. These come in all different sizes. I just get the smaller ones. I don't even know what size these are. Um, doesn't say. Thought it might say on there. It's an 8 by 10. Yep, 8 by 10. Stencil and sponge. We can do that, Anita. I'll put that on the list. Don't let me forget it. If I forget to write it down, make sure that you remind me. Because we're going to do some different inking techniques over the next few weeks. Um, and then we'll move over to some other type techniques to do on paper. Right now we're in the embossing and inking stage. But we're going to be doing, we're, we're also going to be working with some um, powders, some watercolor papers, things like that. That way you guys can see all of the techniques and then you can, you can try out the ones that you like the looks of best without having to invest in everything. You can see what you like or what you might want to do and then you can go from there and take off running with it. But don't be intimidated with things like those flakes, the gilding flakes. They are super easy to use. You can use them on tons of different projects. Um, anything that tape will stick to or glue will stick to, you can use those gilding flakes on. Pan pastels. Um, I have, I had some. I don't know if I still have my pastels, Vicki. Um, I've done them before. I think I do. If I can locate them, then I will definitely go through and show you guys how to use some of those. Okay. So we've got stencils on the list and pastels, if I can find them. We'll put that on the list. Um, next week, I think we're going to move over into, so you're going to need your glass mats if you're going, um, going to be following along with these. We're going to be working with um, I'm going to be using, this is just one. They come in a set. These are the Ken Oliver Color Burst. Um, and we're going to be showing you guys how to work with those two or three different ways that you can, you can use these. So that's going to be, I haven't decided, either Wednesday or Monday. Um, I haven't 
made up my mind because I do want to throw in a couple of cards in between some of the techniques um, for Wednesdays. So I may put the color burst off until next Monday. You can use Teflon sheets, Susan, but a word uh, to the wise, they can um, stain and they can also break down. I have one here. Um, and when this one gets wet, it kind of seeps through. Um, so that's why I prefer glass. Um, it doesn't seep through. There's no chance. Yes, you can put rubbing alcohol on the top of those as well. Anita. All right, guys, that concludes tonight. If you guys have any questions or something that you forgot to ask or you want to know on how to do this, please message me or ask in the group, and, and we'll get it answered for you best we can until next Monday. But I think Wednesday we're going to do some type of a quilling card for those of you who don't like to do the messy inks and stuff. Um, I like to get my hands dirty sometimes doing these and I know some, some of you guys don't like to do that. You like the cleaner um, crafting ideas. So uh, I think Wednesday I'm going to do a quilling card and then Monday we will come to color burst. Yes, we have the best moderators out there and the great, best patrons and Kofi supporters as well. Thank you guys. Thank you to all my YouTube memberships as well. Uh, quilling is going to be Wednesday. Let me pop up the calendar for you guys just to, so that you will know. We still have a few minutes. Let me get this over here. Right here. On um, Wednesday. The 12th. We're going to do quilling and then color burst on the 17th. So if you want to mark your calendars, you'll know. Bye, Vicki. Thank you, everybody, for watching and joining. Please give a thumbs up, like, and if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. We'll catch you guys on Wednesday.